a protein shake more than Gronkowski. In terms of the days off, uh, Nate Solder, Patriots offensive lineman, uh, tweeted this morning, Dear Bill, I'm taking today off. Signed to Nate. So Chris Hogan, Malcolm Mitch, Rob Nikovich, Dante Hightower, uh, they are with us this morning. The, the parade of champions continues. What does today count as then for you guys? What day is it? Yeah. I think it's Tuesday, Tuesday. Wednesday. It's today. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a couple days, like, of just going, 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 going. So, yeah. What's, today's, today's a day off. In terms of numbers, what's gone on more since the Super Bowl? Consumption of beverages or hours of sleep? Hogan. I'm going to go with hours of sleep. You've had more hours of sleep than you have No, I haven't had any hours of sleep. Oh, none. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely beverages. Beverages, then. I, I, I yeah, know you're going to you saw my picture. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> Malcolm, you, you've been enjoying this. I mean, life I'm, doesn't get much easier for a rookie. You just waltz into the NFL and uh, just out the Super Bowl. I am very fortunate. Yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it. Now, I found it was interesting. We were talking during the commercial break, and these fellows come out here. They look like they're, they're dressed for television success. <laughs> and w what happened with you? What happened? Well, I got a call yesterday, and they said, um, you have an opportunity to go to ESPN. And I'm being a rookie. I didn't know what to expect. So I said, oh, okay, I'll go do some radio interviews. And then... This morning, I had to rush a text to my mom saying, I think I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> you might want to tune in. So um, hopefully I'm not letting her down. Well, I'm glad that you came to ESPN and you were going to be on TV and not just radio. Because we do the television thing. Uh, we were talking also during the break about the parade yesterday and how big it was for this city. The weather was out there, but people were still very much a part of it. What was your favorite part of yesterday's parade? Well, I think just the whole experience, um, it was a perfect New England, Boston type day. The snow was coming down, a little bit of rain, a little bit of sleet. Um, everyone was out supporting us, and we were all having a great time. Um, it was just the whole thing was an amazing experience. And I had asked you where it ranked with some of the other ones. What did you say? It's, this was the best one. I was mm -hmm. fully enjoying my time in this parade, so uh, it was great. Chris, what was your favorite moment? Uh... Just being on that float when we like when we got out there like right away and just seeing all those people. I mean, I saw some of the guys, some people. I did an appearance uh, at Models that later that night, and people were saying, "Ah, oh, we you know we got up at six o'clock in the morning to get you know front row spots, and you know they they waited soaking wet in the rain for you know for hours. I mean, it's it was crazy, man. Those those fans were it was awesome. You know, just the entire day it was it was really cool. I'll tell you your, your experience. Um, I'll be the first to say that I did not partake in the parade. <laughs> no. Did not. I do have one thing that I can say. There was yeah, a guy sure. that climbed up on the float. He climbed up there, and he had a tattoo right on his, like, hip of Chris Long, 95. Wow. That's, wow. Yes. That's a so whole other level. I took a picture. I put it on my Instagram. You can check it out. But uh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Just to go this, guy got, this guy got a, a tattoo on, on him of long, 95. It's like, okay. Maybe he did that after the game. He was so excited and inebriated. He didn't I, I feel guess. Uh, one of the big things about the parade yesterday, of course, was, was Gronk. And it was impossible not to see this and know that he was just having a real big time. Hey, Watson! Who's getting wild tonight? I wasn't even planning on going that crazy, but the fans were asking for it. People in the stands have their shirts off going ham, extra ham, and I brought what they wanted. I party for them. Chuck Beers for them. I had to.
you know, he never met a cold beer he didn't like. <laughs> how, how would you guys describe Gronk? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but that was probably the best Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonation <laughs> I've ever seen. But, I mean, hands down, bro, what you see is what you get mm -hmm. with the Gronk. And uh, what you see, you know, off the field, he does the exact same on the field. And, I mean, he's a hell of a teammate and obviously a, a hell of a partier, too. Guy just likes to have fun, man. Mm -hmm. Loves playing football, loves being around people. Um, you know, you saw it. I mean, he just loves he, he loves it. He's a walk-in highlight tape on the football field and off the field, too. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've been around. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the most impressive thing is from the first day I met Rob to, the, you know, yesterday, mm -hmm. the guy has not changed one bit. You know, he loves life. He has a great time. He's a beast on the field. Um, and he's just, you know, an awesome teammate. So, again, it's just every day you're always having fun with that guy. How does he treat rookies, Malcolm? <laughs> uh, really well. I can honestly say from the first time I've seen Rob until um, the last time I haven't seen anything but a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. He welcomes you in and you know, wants you to have fun. <laughs> You look at the game, it was 21-3 at the half, and they get up 28-3. I want to take you guys to take me inside the locker room at halftime. We've got both sides of the ball represented here. I want to start with the defensive side of the ball. You guys are down 21-3 at the half. What were you guys saying amongst each other in the locker room at halftime? It was a game at one point that got out of hand. Um, you know, even, even before we got in the locker room, you know, Deron Harmon was, was one of the guys who was just constantly saying, you know, this is going to be a hell of a comeback. This is going to be something legendary. This is going to be something my kids are going to be talking about. So, you know, just going into the locker room, you would think there would be a lot of chaos, a lot of panic, a lot of yelling, a lot of, you know, guys pointing fingers. And, mm -hmm. you know, that wasn't the case. I mean, guys, we, we came in, we knew, we knew we didn't play well. We knew why we, why we, what we messed up on, what we needed to fix. And, uh, you know, Matty P, Josh, uh, Joe Judge came in there and, and Bill, and they drew up what we needed to do. And, I mean, guys sat down, we was, we was ready to go. And, I mean, the rest of it was, was, was history. You've been a part of championship teams. How much of that mindset was in the locker room when you guys were in a game that was 21-3 at the half? Well, I think we just, you know, we had a lot of confidence in, in each other. Um, we came in at halftime and knew that we didn't play our best football in that first half. And um, really just the confidence that we had with each other and knowing that we're going to make the corrections, we're going to go out there and play um, the second half as hard as we possibly can, empty the tanks, have nothing left. And... Uh, we knew that if we did that, we'd, we'd come out on top. And, um, you know, we broke down before we went out at half. Yep. Usually we don't break down. We just go out. But we broke it down because we knew that we're going to go out there and we're going to make something happen. Guys, we saw, we saw Brady again do what he does when his team's down late and he leads the offense back to a championship. James White scores the game-winning touchdown. But what was he like throughout the comeback? Because you got the sense early in the second half and as the offense started to get momentum, Chris, that he was at a point where he couldn't be stopped. What did he say when you guys were trying to make the comeback? Um, you know, he came up to a couple guys, and he just said, he looked at me. I mean, one time he said, you know, I'm going I'm to need you guys to make some plays, you know. And, I mean, that's what we had to do that entire second half. We just had to go out there and make some plays. Um, you know, the defense came up huge for us, you know, making stops, and we were able to score. And, uh, you know, we came in at halftime, you know, not a lot was said. There wasn't really a big rah-rah speech or anything like that. Uh, I know Julian was, tell, you know, telling a lot of guys, you know, this is going to be a story, you know, that we're going to be able to tell a lot of people about. You know, it's going to be one heck of a story. It's going to be a great comeback. Um, you know, we just had to go out there, you know, play the best 30 minutes of football that we had left in the season. And, uh, you know, that's what the guys did. I mean, you know, like Rob said, I mean, we had all the confidence in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had Tom, you know, the greatest quarterback, you know, with us. He had all the confidence in the world in us, and that's really all we needed. You know, after that, you know, we just had to go out there and play good football. Malcolm, you're a rookie. You've yes. got perhaps the greatest quarterback of all time, <laughs> and you're in a situation where you're watching him lead your team back to right. win Super Bowl 51. What was going through your head? I think being a rookie, not having that experience in any game such as that one, um, I immediately turned to the leaders, such as these three, and just tried to follow their lead. Um, everywhere I looked, nobody had their head down, nobody um, lost their confidence, so I just followed along, and I believe just as um, my leaders did. Rob, you've been around 
Boston, you've been around the Patriots. We knew the storyline coming into the season about the Flake Gate, Tom sitting out for the first four games of the season. You yourself had a suspension for the first four games of the season. You guys have said all the right things leading up to the game, but I wonder how much more did this one mean because of everything that had gone on before? Well, you know, I think that this year there was definitely challenges and obstacles, but um, like every year in an NFL season, there's always going to be um, things that come, come along that you're not ready for. Mm -hmm. And uh, those things test your character, but they also, you know, make you a better person in the long run. So, again, just learning from experience, um, building on your character, and everyone coming together, I think that's what made this team so special starting out in the off season when we start running and lifting weights, everyone just all in, mm -hmm. OTAs, mini camp, training camp, everyone's just trying to do their best to be the, to play their best football for the guy next to them. And it really, it was an amazing, amazing season. So happy to be a part of it and, you know, be, have it and share it with all these guys. It'll certainly go down as one of the greatest Super Bowls in history. I'm going to take advantage of the studio light. If we can get a tight shot of that Super Bowl <laughs> ring right there. And he decided to wear it just to let everybody know. Yeah, I was just gonna, That's the kind of bling I bring to Bristol. Gonna, the, there you go. I have a the, Super Bowl I have the, ring. The flying Elvis faces me. I like to look at it. You, know. you guys, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the Super Thank Bowl. You. Malcolm, tell mom you did great. <laughs> I thought this was fantastic.